listening to the Pharmacist Answers Podcast. I'm Cynthia, the pharmacist, and today you'll get your questions answered and your curiosity cured. So today's word is apnea. Apnea. Apnea is related to, you probably heard it as sleep apnea, but apnea can happen at any time, and sleep apnea is when apnea happens while you're sleeping. So apnea is a medical term that means you stop breathing. In medical terminology, a lot of words that have an A at the beginning or a prefix of A or a prefix of A-N, but it means without. So A at the beginning of apnea is a indication of without. Penia, P-N-E-A, is the suffix that is the medical suffix for um, breathing or respiration. So it's without breathing. So sleep apnea is sleeping without breathing. That's bad. Now, your natural respiration patterns have a rest period where you reach the end of your exhalation and there's a pause at the bottom before you come to your inhalation and then there's a pause at the top. So that's not related to apnea. Apnea has to do with your you going without breathing for an abnormal amount of time. You can consciously stop your breathing by holding in and or holding out and not letting the the air move in and out of your lungs like it normally would involuntarily but if that involuntary system somehow gets interrupted or gets a pause in it then your involuntary breathing stops and usually when you're sleeping your involuntary system is what's responsible for keeping your lungs breathing So that's going to be the system that ends up having a problem if someone has sleep apnea. Sleep apnea, the trigger of it is somewhat unknown. Sometimes it has to do with the fact that something in your throat actually closes off when you you lay flat in a bed that doesn't allow the air to pass out in your nose or mouth, down your throat, and into your lungs and back. Other times, it's completely physiological. Besides caffeine, what are good things to help stay awake? We'll talk about that, Melissa, in just a second. Because that's a really good question. So with apnea, if that happens, then it puts stress on your heart, which leads to your, your blood pressure being increased, your heart rate being increased. It doesn't allow your metabolism to operate as efficiently as it should. Because here's the thing. Have you ever thought and asked yourself the question, when I lose weight, where does that stuff go? Have you ever asked yourself that question before? Because sometimes people are like, people will will get on a program or they'll change their eating habits and they'll, they, it just looks like they're, they just melt layers away off their body and end up with um, a much healthier body figure or at a healthier weight. But have you ever asked yourself the question, when I lose weight, Where does that stuff actually go? Because here's the secret. It doesn't go in your poop. When you lose weight, the fat that your body burns off of your body doesn't end up in your waist for it to end up in your poop. Do you know where it goes? You actually breathe it out. When your body burns fat off of your body, One of the major, major, major byproducts of metabolism is carbon dioxide. How do you get rid of carbon dioxide? You go, right? When your body metabolizes the fat when you're, when you're losing weight, the main byproduct of all of that metabolism is carbon dioxide. And the only way that you can get rid of carbon dioxide is to respirate. So you breathe away your fat. That is why people who have sleep apnea probably have metabolism problems because they can't, they can't respirate what their body is metabolizing. So that, 
that process isn't very efficient. If you can't metabolize very well and get rid of your metabolism waste, so I, if I sleep more, I lose more weight. Yes, because when you sleep, your body, the only thing your body has to focus on is metabolizing things that it needs. So being overweight can lead to sleep apnea, but sleep apnea can also lead to a slowed down weight loss process, which makes you kind of discouraged, but you can't lose the weight efficiently enough if you have sleep apnea. So sleep apnea can contribute to obesity, but also can, can interfere with fixing obesity. Then the obesity also affects Blood pressure and sleep apnea also affects blood pressure. Do you, so you see how these things kind of compound and just kind of becomes this whole muddled mess of like trying to fix all these things. So if you can fix the sleep, then the knot kind of starts to untangle. Uh, medication can affect apnea. It can in the fact that, especially if it's medication that uh, interferes with how your brain functions and how naturally you fall asleep. It possibly can. My friend has serious sleep apnea, and they had to basically rebuild his throat. Yeah, so that's like a physiological thing. So medications that seduces you to sleep in an unnatural way, they can make apnea worse because your body isn't as responsive to the, the tiny changes in the involuntary systems um, that keep your body running while you're asleep. Lyrica, I don't know if that's necessarily one of the major side effects of Lyrica, but because Lyrica is something that affects your neurons and it works specifically on your nerve conductivity, then it may potentially affect um, those involuntary nerves that keep your, your system running while you're sleeping and not having to think about it. Melissa, are you still here? Let's, an let's answer your questions about things that help you stay awake. Caffeine, I talked about caffeine last week in relation to like headaches and stuff. And the reason caffeine helps you wake up is because it dilates your blood vessels to allow more blood to flow through at a time. So when you sleep, a lot of the blood vessels in your extremities constrict because your body tries to be efficient in its systems. So your arms and legs and fingers and face don't really need a lot of blood flow when you sleep, it's getting plenty. So it will constrict those blood vessels so that more blood stays in your core. So it's flowing to your organs. Your liver does all kinds of work while you sleep. Your brain does all kinds of work while you sleep. Your heart and your lungs have to keep going while you sleep. So those are the places that the body sends the blood supply. So when you wake up and now you need to be focused, well, your, your focus and attention areas of your brain weren't priority while you were sleeping and your natural leveling out process for the blood to flow to those places again when you wake up is slow. So if, when you have caffeine, like in your coffee, then it opens up those blood vessels faster than your your body's natural system would. So then you get this rush of blood to the areas of your body and your brain that you need while you're awake, but you didn't need while you were asleep. And so that's why ca caffeine, you know, you're like real groggy before, and then like you get your hit of caffeine and you're like, bam, I'm ready to go. Um, it's because of that increased blood flow that the caffeine can induce. So more natural things other than caffeine that can help you stay awake. One of the most important things that you can do to improve your wake time and your alertness is natural light. Sunlight goes into your eyes and the cells of your eyes receive that light and say, oh, it's daylight. And it triggers the release of serotonin in your brain. And serotonin is the neurotransmitter that helps with alertness and focus and good moods, and all those things. That's why depression medications work really hard on serotonin, because usually depression can be a major imbalance of serotonin, and um, your brain may be producing serotonin. Your brain has this really, that's why I can't sleep well during the day. Yes, and that's why I went, during Ronay's thing, when she was talking about third shift, mine does too, Melissa, and it, it helps so much in the wintertime when it's dark for an hour and a half before like the sun comes up when I'm awake. But Steve, when I was sitting in Ronay's, like you have to trick your brain to thinking that it's nighttime 
during during the day. So you need total darkness. There's no napping on the couch with the windows closed because you're going to get that sunlight coming in. So third shifters usually have to black out their windows and black out all kinds of light, even even like clock lights and phone lights and smoke detector lights, like every any of those little kinds of lights can can interrupt. So you have to get really creative to darken the room. Also, third shifters or people who travel a lot and deal with jet lag and swapping time zones use melatonin because melatonin is the replacement of serotonin. Black trash bags to cover her windows so she can sleep during the day. Yes. And so, yeah, using, like, there's blackout screens that you can get for windows. There's blackout curtains that you can get for windows. But you really have to get all of the light away as best you can. So the the natural process, the sun comes up. It stimulates your eyes. Your eyes start, your eyes tell your brain to start making serotonin. Your brain makes serotonin, and it goes to all the places that it needs to go and tells your body to wake up. It's time to pay attention. So then the serotonin's made while the sun is up, and you're focused and paying attention and doing all the things that you need to do and be very attentive. Then the sun starts to go down. And as the sun starts to go down, your eyes aren't stimulated by that light, so your brain makes less serotonin. So instead of serotonin just being gone, serotonin is replaced by melatonin. And melatonin is what your body produces in the absence of light and therefore tells your body that it's time to sleep. So before we had electricity and electronics and all these things that made their own light to help us see in the dark, that's how we function. The sun came up, you got up, you did your stuff, the sun went down, you went to sleep. And then we decided that we needed to try to be productive as many of the 24 hours as we possibly can. Industrial revolution, all of these things. So now you've got people working around the clock. We've got technology that gives us electricity so we can light our house at night and see later into the night. But those are the things that can disrupt that serotonin, melatonin trade-off in your brain. Specifically, electronic light. Light that comes from your TV, your computers, your tablets, your phones. Um, can you buy serotonin? No, you cannot. Serotonin, there are prescription medications that affect serotonin, but they are prescription. Um, you can't actually get serotonin anywhere. The main reason is they haven't found a way for you to be able to swallow it and it survive through your stomach and to be absorbed into your bloodstream for it to make it to your brain and do its job. Is broken sleep detrimental? No, but it's less efficient. Melatonin was originally developed for people, but serotonin, it's a little more finicky, and so they haven't found a way for it to survive the metabolism to, to make it through your stomach. Same reason things like insulin and whatever can't, can't be like in a pill form and be really easy because it's biological based and it ends up getting destroyed and digested before it can make it into the body to start doing its job. So that's why serotonin isn't, isn't in pill form. Um, they haven't found a way to do that yet. So how do you get serotonin? You get outside in the sunshine. Get some sunshine, Melissa. That's the, that's the key. That's why some people who have really, really bad experiences with like seasonal affective disorder, they'll actually get sun lamps for their house. So lights like regular white, yellow lights that emit light in our house don't stimulate the amount of serotonin that, um, that you would want. But having a sun lamp that is specifically intended to, to produce light as close to what the sun produces as possible to to give you that that light stimulation but using electronics after it gets dark can lead to that disruption of the melatonin production it's not like okay i turn all the lights off and in 15 minutes i'm going to have enough melatonin to go to sleep it's the gradual buildup of the melatonin in your brain after it gets dark 15 minutes of daylight, even near a window. Yes, exactly. I mean, it doesn't take much sunlight at all 
to kind of help stimulate enough serotonin on a regular basis to reap the benefits of it. It's electronic curfew an hour before bed. That's a good rule because, again, it's not like I'm going to turn everything off and in 15 minutes I'm going to have enough melatonin. One hour, two hours. I haven't exactly read a study to know, like, what's going to be the most beneficial. So, I don't know if they've done, like, a head-to-head study to say, these people were off electronics for two hours and these were off electronics for one hour um, to know what's going to reap the most benefit. But, really and truly, any electronic light from electronics after the sun has gone completely down is going to lead to some measure of interruption in your melatonin cycle. So watching TV before you go to bed, even though people say, oh, I have to leave the TV on so I can sleep, that's usually like a background noise reason that's not really proven. Using your laptop late at night, staying on your phone while you're laying in bed, trying to fall asleep, like you're actually making it worse. Blue blocker glasses if you have to work late. Now that's that's a suggestion I haven't ever heard before, but that makes a lot of sense. So, blue blocker glasses are essentially glasses that polarize and block the the blue the blue length of of waves of the of the light waves. So, light from like physics is it's waves like all mushed together so the white the light looks white, but if you split that up like with a prism, then obviously there's multiple waves of multiple sizes that make the different colors. So, the blue blocker glasses block that short, that really short wavelength, which is like the blue and purple, because that's what's going to give you the most stimulation in your eyes for the serotonin production. That kind of explains that. But I, that's a good suggestion. You can wear them all evening to help. So where do you have them, Emily? Where did you get them? I'm not sure my, my podunk country Walmart's going to have them. If I nap on the couch during the day, I prop or throw a pillow over my face. I do that when I sleep at night, too. Amazon three ninety nine. Oh, that's okay. That's awesome. Okay, blue blocker glasses. Amazon. I do Amazon. Amazon Prime. That's my favorite. Anything that you have to do, like I said, Steve. Sometimes you have to get creative to to get all of the light blocked out. If if your nighttime sleep has to be when the sun is up, so that also flips to the other side. While you're at work, you need light stimulation. So a sun lamp in your workspace, on your desk, something like that. Getting that light stimulation because you've got to have enough light stimulation to emulate daytime. So getting creative with darkening your space so you can sleep, but also brightening up your space while you're working so your, your eyes can at least think that it's daylight. Because one, if you're working in a place that has fluorescent lights in the ceiling, like a lot of um, warehouses or like retail stores, Fluorescent light is not going to be very helpful in emulating daylight. If you can get a sun lamp or like a sun lamp bulb and replace it in one of your regular lamps or lights in your workspace, that would probably be helpful for Steve. Again, the serotonin, that's your happy chemical. That's the thing that helps you feel awake and alert and puts you in a good mood. Put my phone face down. Yeah, my clock, I have to keep my clock face on like the dimmest level. So you can't add any light to your to your space. Can do you get breaks? Can you get like a a travel sun lamp so you can sit in your car and get 15 minutes of light exposure? Because that lack of serotonin is one of the things that leads to depression. Here's one of the things I was going to say earlier. Super bright lights at work. Are they fluorescent lights or like halogen lights? Because those lights are not going to stimulate your serotonin very good. Your your body has this awesome recycle process because it likes to be efficient. Your body doesn't like to be wasteful. And so there is a process in your brain called the serotonin reuptake. And That is one of the things that depression medications work on. They're SSRIs or serotonin, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. So they block the recycle process so the serotonin floats around longer, which is kind of neat. But as your body makes the serotonin, even the little bitty bits that it makes from the fake light that we've got around, your body is going to be like vacuuming it up to recycle it. 
you want a good amount of serotonin production from light stimulation to to affect the areas of your brain. Because here's the thing, I think it was Emily that mentioned in one of the other scopes we talked earlier where third shift working is considered a carcinogen now. And one of the reasons that is, is at night when you're sleeping, your body has this enzyme that's called tumor necrosis factor. Um, TNF for short. So your tumor necrosis factor, here's a bonus word of the day because it's a medical phrase. Tumor, we know what that means. That's cancer, right? Tumors are groups of irregular cells that can reproduce a lot faster than your normal cells or they can produce toxins that your normal cells don't produce. So that's bad. Necrosis, that means death. And factor just means like protein or enzyme. So tumor necrosis factor. So it's your tumor killing factor is only produced at night when you aren't getting light stimulation. So if you don't get to sleep much during your nighttime hours, then your tumor necrosis factor isn't getting to, to work efficiently for you. And thus, it may leave leave some tumor cells or or irregular mutated cells around that can lead to bigger problems. So it's essentially your little cancer killing bot that you go to sleep and it crawls around your body and checks out all the cells and it's like taking roll and it's saying, "Okay, you're normal, you're normal, you're normal, you're normal. Oh, you started goofing off today. I'm gonna kill you." And so it gets rid of those tumor mutated cells that could eventually turn into cancer. So if that's the only, if that process only happens while you're sleeping and you have to work every night while it's dark, then your body's not going to be able to, to run that, that tumor killing system, um, very efficiently. So that was a way too much to try to type out when I'm a commenter on a scope, but being able to say that out loud, she's so right that, that that can be a problem because your body has a way, has a vacuum cleaning system to get rid of those cells that can mutate and become cancer. And if you're not giving your body time or just things in life lead to your regular routines, not giving your body time to run that process, then your body isn't going to be able to, to do it vacuuming very well and may potentially miss one that that can lead lead to cancer so we did a whole gamut about sleep so the usps is killing you well it's certainly not contributing to your longevity steve i know and there's tons of people that work and that's the way that they feed and provide their families because they work nights and that's the only thing that they can get to, to be able to provide for their family and keep things going. If there was a way that society as a whole could say, you know what? It's more important that our citizens sleep and stay healthy and live really long lives versus being super productive and working all hours of the night, um, keeping things running 24 hours a day, then we would be better off. Anyway, that's my opinion on that. And like I said, splitting up your sleep is better than no sleep at all. But having that long, continuous sleep is going to be the most restorative for your body. So anyway, that's that. Bye! Thanks for listening to the Pharmacist Answers podcast. The pharmacy is now closed. You can post your questions and comments on our Facebook page. That's facebook.com slash farm answers pod. Or you can email the show at pharmacist answers here at gmail.com. You can tweet me or message me on Twitter at Sin Hendricks. You can find the show notes at pharmacist answers here 
Pharmacist Answers broadcast live on Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 9.02 a.m. Eastern Time on the Periscope app. You can follow me at Sin Hendricks or view in your web browser at periscope.tv slash Sin Hendricks. See you next time on the Pharmacist Answers podcast.